What's up, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Duran Duran. We're going back to their 2000 album Pop Trash again. I'm excited for this one uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, that is to say, we're up to the tune Pop Trash movie, uh, which I now understand through a, a few comments that I've read below. Again, shout out to all of those of you sharing information, not just with me, but with each other. Um, I continue to see sort of people learning about the band and sort of enjoying encountering others who have, you know, different angles and different perspectives on the albums and tunes. Uh, but I know through a few comments um, that this song was originally written by Simon for Blondie, uh, and then apparently Blondie didn't want to use it or, you know, decided not to include it on their album. Uh, and so ultimately, um, Simon was, I guess, very happy that he could then use it for uh, a Duran song himself. Um, so I guess the album, which was originally going to be called Hallucinating Elvis, was then changed to Pop Trash. Um, so I'm excited by a tune um, that Simon himself was, you know, keen to sort of, you know, take repossession of and to articulate in his own way through, you know, the primary outlet of his lyrical creativity. Um, I'm also interested by the name itself. Um, you know, Pop Trash movie suggests to me sort of a flavor kind of like a Pulp Fiction novel, which is to say, like, you know, made for mass appeal, perhaps appealing to base urges or sort of, you know, lurid content as a way to, you know, pique um, either the prurient interest or sort of um, that voyeurism for sort of, you know, like violent fictional entertainment and so on. So um, in a way it makes me think about sort of a, a type of entertainment that is meant to sort of, again, appeal to the sort of um, the lowest of the low in terms of, you know, what um, interest us or what motivates us, um, but in a way it also um, speaks to, as I said, the sort of dichotomy of something that like could seem to have like um, glitz and quality, but in a way like it's a veneer more than like the actual substance beneath. So again, pop trash in the sense that like um, there's a coating of sort of, again, like in this case sequins or um, again glitz and glamour, but perhaps, you know, there's an absence of um, actual creativity or quality or so on. It's just meant to be sensationalist and just sort of like hit you with shock value, but in the end there's not, you know, deeper themes, you know, undergirding the material. So, again, those are the ideas that come to my head when I see the phrase Pop Trash Movie. We'll have to see if those have anything to do with it. I likely uh, doubt it, uh, but at the same time, um, like I said, I just enjoy uh, thinking about phrases and words before we go into uh, listen to Simon's poetry. So here we go. This is Pop Trash Movie on the album Pop Trash by Duran Duran 2000. <laughs>
have straight consonances. tune um it's interesting because like lyrically you know i think it was you know easier to pick up than some other tunes first listen in terms of okay so you know i'm living in a pop trash movie you and me star together in every scene um you know we're gonna have our 15 minutes of fame you know and like what was it live out the dream i couldn't quite pick up on the the specific last line um but yet yeah, it, it seems to be this idea that like you know we're gonna sort of fulfill that dream of being, you know, famous for a moment and kind of like, you know, we're, we're the center of the pop culture attention for at least that, you know, flashing moment or fleeting moment. Um, but yeah, as to exactly, you know, how that's being taken and whether there's a sort of like irony or a, um, a sort of disappointment at the actual like quality of that moment or in terms of like, it is only that moment. It wasn't sort of a lasting sort of um, respect and, you know, an enduring legacy or whatever. It's like, oh, you were, you know, s um, churned up by and spat out by the machine of the, like, pop culture zeitgeist. So, um, yeah, I'll have to listen to it some more. Again, even with some lines coming across pretty clearly, I still think there's some contours that I need to um, key in on. Um, but again, I do, like, a full, like, you know, proper listen. And in some cases, you know, if a tune, like, really hits me, um, you know, I'll listen to it several times over the next couple days just to kind of like really get a sense of what it is. So, um, yeah, I'm going to listen to it some more. Uh, do let me know if you have a particular take or, you know, sort of insight into some of the themes or, you know, thought about the, the sonics in one way or another. As I said, there was some really cool guitar work, which like at first it was more like utilitarian. It was just giving the track the sort of edge and the grit it needed. And then at the end it was like the guitar got to like run free and like up high into the sky so um yeah that was really cool let me know what you think um when we get back to this album the next time we will be up to a tune called fragment which i'm interested already obviously it speaks to you know the partial nature of something or you know as it relates to um, a larger whole or you know comprised of many parts um so yeah we'll have to see exactly how that manifests uh we'll talk about it more when i get to react to that one uh but yeah let me know what you think of this tune uh other than that thank you for listening and watching i will see you next time <laughs>